J.D. Note only plays four minutes before getting into foul trouble in the first half. But the Arkansas Razorbacks continue to play great defense and defeat the West Virginia Mountaineers. 77-68, this is Arkansas Basketball Recap. I'm Daniel Price. That's Jacob Price. Man, this is, this is a good win. And I'm going to start by saying that for the – because I think this, this stat is important. For the sixth game in a row, Arkansas has held their opponent to under 40% from the field, uh, which is great. Uh, I, I think it's safe to say at this point that Arkansas is playing pretty elite defense. Uh, and that's and it's made it to where that when they get in situations where what happened in this game, which was JD Note getting in foul trouble, uh, real quick. I mean, with less than four minutes gone in the game, then having to sit out sixteen minutes of the of the first half, their defense was able to hold it, and they played good offense in that stretch too. Like they moved the ball well and stuff, but they just didn't. They just did not. They just locked down and didn't let West Virginia score. Mm-hmm. And uh, and and this is nice because it's starting to feel like Arkansas is a elite defensive team right now that scores in spurts. Yeah, it was it was definitely it was kind of a weird game because, um, I mean, everybody played pretty well. Um, it was definitely. You know, when Note went out, it was concerning, but they they managed to keep it to a seven point lead pretty much the whole time he was out. Um, which you know, you still felt like that's kind of a bummer. You were hoping that maybe if Note it looked like if Note had been in there, you might have been able to push that up to 20, which you saw did happen in the second half. Although, you know, if there's anything disappointing about that game, it's just and I guess I mean you could just as easily credit West Virginia for this, but when we got up by 18 or whatever it seems like we have a hard time really putting our foot on the throat and just stomping teams out. Mm -hmm. And it looked like they let up at about the 13 minute mark and stopped playing uh, as aggressively. I don't know if it was that as much. Well, that might've happened on our, uh, to us on the defensive end. I mean, what happened was West Virginia went zone and they went on a run. That's what Mm -hmm. happened. I mean, they went zone, and we stopped scoring, and we started turning the ball over again because guys were in the passing lanes and stuff, and we let them – that's that's where that 18-point lead got shrunk down to, I think at some points it was down five. to five. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's what happened. And uh, what Huggins did was he's like, I don't really want to play zone, but obviously he's done some scouting and uh, said, well, maybe that's what you do. I, I think that we have to be prepared for – Maybe teams don't come out in zone, but I think we have to be prepared for teams to decide to throw zone at us if they're trying to make it, if they're trying to go on a run or climb back into a game or something like that. Cause that's, I mean, I would. Yeah. If I, if, if I thought my personnel that I had were disciplined enough to not, because you can just as easily when you're switching defenses up, you can get confused. You can confuse yourself, you know what I mean? And give up easy buckets, which they almost did. I mean, they we took a couple of wide open shots that just we didn't make you know but um if i thought i had the personnel to to jump back and forth between defenses if i were playing arkansas i'd do that all game long yeah. i'd just make him confused i'd play three minutes of zone jump to man go back to zone and just make it where arkansas can never get in a rhythm mm-hmm. but like i said that that that's hard because you can just as easily throw your own you know self off by i mean it, it can just as easily be uh a problem for you on defense but um yeah i mean i i wish i i mean i'm i'm assuming that they're practicing zone yeah you know, sure. playing against zone and it does look like they once they see it they have a, they struggle for a couple of minutes then they kind of figure it out and they end up you know, at first they start, they settle for those 17 foot jump shots that they're giving you. And then after you, you know, the team starts to come back after a little bit, when you're doinking a couple of those off the back of the rim, we start to work the ball a little better. And you start getting Tony on weak side dunks and stuff like that. And then the team is forced out of it. You know, Um, I I mean, it it does seem to me that Arkansas would much prefer you play man. That's, I think that's still true. They would rather you play man. Arkansas looks uncomfortable when teams play zone. They don't like it. 
Yeah, I'm still would be very loath to play a team that specializes in zone. Yeah. Like that's that's what they really want to do. That I think will be a major problem for us. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, my my voice is a little scratchy. <clears throat> um uh but I thought I thought it was a good win. I thought Arkansas played well uh all the way around. You know, um the zone thing was a little yeah, and I think that's just credit to Bob Huggins, a good coach, and he was doing something, and you know, uh they went on a run when they went zone, but uh, Arkansas didn't let Arkansas never trailed in the game, and uh, mm-hmm. that's great. They never gave it up. Um, they 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 scored the first bucket, and they never they never got behind, and so uh, that's that's great. Uh, it does seem that these like second half slow starts that's a thing of the past. Uh, they mm-hmm. haven't done that in a while, um, so I like that. Uh, there was. There's a bunch of individual performances. I think uh, it's hard to say how no t- he played good. Uh, it's hard to say he, he, you know, he played half the game because he went out so early, still had 15 points. Uh, but I thought that I thought a lot of guys uh, played played really well. Uh, I think you could easily you could easily give the game ball or you know player of the game to Jalen again. I mean, he had 12 points and 15 rebounds two blocks, two steals. I mean, and drew, drew two more charges. I mean, they'll, they'll, even when he makes a mistake, I mean, uh, the, the one time where he like makes a bad outlet pass gets intercepted and then just lets the guy run him over. That is so heady. Mm-hmm. Uh, like it's so, it'd be so easy just to be frustrated and foul that guy trying to stop him from get, you know, getting a layup or a dunk or something. And Jalen doesn't um, instead he just, stand still unless the dude run him over and you're just like this guy that's that's just a real you are a you have a high basketball iq when you're starting to do when you do stuff like that so it'd be easy to say that because because Jalen just does so much but i think if i uh i think for player of the game I, i'll go uh with tony this game i thought tony played really well i just thought he was everywhere he was six of eight he was so efficient uh he had seven rebounds three assists uh, I just I thought he played I played he had a lot of energy uh, I thought I thought Tony played great yeah I mean honestly the, the I mean it's probably a good thing but these you know commentaries are starting to become a little bit unnecessary or redundant because they've really been a lot more consistent in the last four or five games I mean Tony is cleaning up all kinds of junk really giving you some extra possessions and like right when you need it, when they're like, you know, you take a bad shot and it feels like they're getting some momentum. He skies in there and pulls down a rebound and, yeah, and he's doing er- that erases the, it. He's doing that from the two guard spot a lot of the time too. I mean, he's a crazy, that, he, he's a crazy guy to be playing the shooting guard. I mean, I mean, in a good way. I mean, just, I mean, I don't, I don't think other shooting guards can keep him off the glass. Yeah. And then, and then Wade's doing the same thing he's been doing every game. He's playing well, hitting shots when they're open and getting his defense. hands playing yeah. really good defense, getting his hands on everything. Williams is doing the same thing he's been doing. Note's playing more solid. I mean, uh, those four guys have really been consistent. Amude's, you know, been a little bit, you know, more hit or miss, but he, got, um, he gave you 12 on four of nine shooting today, uh, made three and three of three from the line, made a three pointer. Uh, hit eight yeah, rebounds. Had eight rebounds. That's huge. that's big for a Mude. We we the, West Virginia was a team that you had to be afraid of getting killed on the boards, and we smoked them on the boards. Yeah, what was what was the differential? Uh, we out rebounded them forty four to twenty six. It's pretty good. I mean, yeah. I guess it kind of felt that way I, I, in the first half. We, well, I mean, we didn't we have like eleven turnovers in the first half. Yeah, and... we ended up we ended up with fifteen total in the game. Um, they we, they only had nine turnovers, so we turned the ball over uh, a lot more than they did. Yeah, and it was weird because when they said that, they I think they, I think I heard the announcer say we had ten turnovers or something, and there were still like three minutes left in the first half, and but we were still up by ten. Mm-hmm. And well, it's, just had... it's just because our I mean, we just there. I mean, they shot. Uh, and in the first half, they shot worse than the second half, but, uh, you know, they, we, they shot 38% for the game. I mean, they were 23 of 60, you know, they were seven of 26 from the three point line. Uh, I mean, our, and then you look at what Arkansas did. Arkansas was 23 of 51. That's 45% field goal percentage. Uh, you know, didn't shoot well from three pointer again. You know, they had, they were three of 14. Uh, but the thing is they didn't take an insane amount either. Like they're not, 
I like that. I like that they're like, we're not taking 23s a game. We're not doing it. Um, and almost none of them are not, – they've not – They've stopped shooting terrible threes. Yeah, they're shooting. They're, shot, they're shooting threes that you get, that you have to shoot, right? To keep yeah, I mean, the, just to keep the defense honest, you have to shoot some of those shots. So, uh, and the ones know, that are the ones that are low percentage are generally at the end of shot clock. Yeah, when somebody catches the ball and just has to throw it up there. But most of those are, like you said, I mean, they're shots you have to take. And we, should, I mean, we, I mean, we, we made twenty eight free throws in this game. I mean, that 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 is, seems to be the recipe. Like, we're not going to make a lot of threes, but we are going to make a lot of free throws. And that's how they're that's how they're gonna do this in a lot of games. That was the one way this game was, and I think this is more the typical game, obviously, if you look at uh the pat the last games, but the the last game was the anomaly, but that was the only way that, that they were different, which is you know, we didn't shoot any free throws in the last there game. There's like no no one did. There was no fouls in that game. It was weird. Right, which was a weird game. But uh yeah, I mean it, it's getting I'll take it. It's going to make these commentaries boring and the same thing over and over again, but I'll take it as long as they're winning. Yeah. No, I, no because what you're doing is that you said you look at they're like, hey, Muss is making up the same recipe every game now and putting that thing in the oven and coming out with a win each time. And you're like, yep, that was the same recipe you used last time because mm. if it's uh, if it's scrumptious coming out of the oven, then uh, don't freaking change it, man. Everyone, everyone likes it. So, yep. and it, it, I mean, he's got, I mean, he's got this rotation pretty much locked down. I mean, if you look at the minute, uh, you know, how the minutes got divided up, Jalen Williams, 36 minutes, Trey Wade, 38 minutes, Tony, 39 minutes, Mude, 24 minutes, JD Note, 23. That's a little bit skewed. He's usually going to be in that 37 to, to 38 range, you know? Um, then you have Devo Davis with 28 minutes off the bench. Uh, that might be a little bit more than he's usually yeah, that might be eight or so more minutes than he's usually getting because of no taping in foul trouble. And then you had Kamani Johnson with four minutes, Chris likes with eight. And I mean, he mm-hmm. really is playing like he he's sort of playing six guys, you know, 20 plus minutes a game. And then two guys a little bit like, Oh, Jalen, I'm going to sit Jalen for two minutes. Like, Oh, I'm I want to, oh, oh, Tony needs a little break real quick here. Uh, I can't play. Yeah, I can't play. No, take forty minutes every game. Okay, likes going there. Uh, there's there does seem to be that seems to be what it is. It, it, there's only six guys logging twenty plus minutes unless somebody gets foul trouble or hurt. Yeah, I mean that, and that part is a little bit. Um, I would say the most concerning part of the team is the fact that you know anybody any given night, some one of those guys ends up in foul trouble, and I mean obviously. You know, if Wade was in foul trouble, it wouldn't be as big a deal if if Williams Cause, was cause, or if Note think, was. But you think Kamani Johnson can come in there and play that role and be fine, right? But it, right now, if I would say if Tony Williams or Note either get injured or end up in missing minutes for some reason, foul trouble or whatever, that's a that that's a problem. It yeah. hurts. Um, yeah. Which, yeah, like I said, mean, and, and just, especially Note, like we we managed to figure it out this game, but like. I know if you're in the SEC tournament or and you're, if you're in March, uh, you don't want to see Note getting a second foul, uh, you know, three and a half minutes into the game because that normally is going to be – it's great that we ought to just lock it down on defense and just not give up anything, but it's tough, man, because, you know, I, I love Devo. I like Devo being on the floor. I thought Devo played pretty pretty good today. I mean, he had – he had two turnovers, but they weren't even his fault. Like he had two turnovers where he just bulleted a pass to a dude that was that just couldn't hold on to it. Maybe there was too much on the pass. I don't know, but there were good looks, you know, like mm-hmm. guys were about to get dunks and they just couldn't hang on to it. And and you could tell by the reaction of those guys that they didn't think that was Devo's fault. They thought that was their fault. You know, like I gotta mm-hmm. hang on to that. So I didn't think Devo played terrible. I mean, he didn't shoot well. I mean, he was two of nine. We missed, you know, took two threes, missed them, but he was three of six from the free throw line was, you know, isn't great, but he had, he still grabbed six rebounds. He had three assists, seven points. Um, and, and, his played, was, and, his, yeah. and his defense was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I, and, thought, I thought he played well. This was, I mean, especially because he was staying no taste in that first half. He, yeah, he didn't come out there and, you know, tear it up or anything, but he didn't hurt you. And he just, held the ship you know what i mean yeah, like just played, kept it, 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 it looked like it didn't hurt you on offense and he never hurts you on defense yeah so and yeah. i mean um, you know likes i don't know man like i mean he went uh four four from the free throw line i like him at the line so that's good um 
I just think it's tough for him, like because because Arkansas is like, hey, let's be elite on defense. I just think it's such a hard thing for him. Yeah, I mean, and you and you notice it. I mean, it's not a coincidence. Like, it's not his fault, but when he has to help at all, getting back to his man, mm-hmm. they can just shoot it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't if they no see matter, him no matter coming, how hard he's trying. I mean, he he had to help on a thing. and had to there was a shooter in the corner, and he had to try to get there. And if it had been anyone else other than Chris Likes. I don't know if that guy's even gonna even gets that shot off. But I mean, he mm-hmm. made full run, stretched out, fly by. But dude, he's just it, like the guy wasn't worried about it. Well, and there is, I mean, obviously, this I means an obvious thing to say. But when when your com- when your body is compact like that, there's a it's it's much more difficult to get those blocks on those jump outs like that without making body contact because you're, I mean, and your arm is this long instead of this long, you know what I mean? And it's like those other guys can get their body to go by and get their arm out there and, and affect that shot. Whereas he has to be careful about when he, cause he can jump as high as anybody on the team, but he has to be careful about his body coming in contact with them more than the other guys do. Cause he's at, his body is in closer proximity to the other people's bodies to get his arm up there. His body is in closer and, proximity to his hand yeah, when, it's, and, when he's stretched out. And it is a problem. You can see him yeah. in like in the, when he was doing that, when he was going all out early in the year, he, I mean, he got a ridiculous amount of, and one threes. Like there was mm-hmm. like a game where he had like a stretch where he had at least four, which is insane. But mm-hmm. um, so, and you can tell he's a little shy from that and it's just, it's not his fault. It's just, not a long defender and it's hard for him to recover yeah and it, it, it doesn't work well with what arkansas has decided they're going to be you know if they decided to be something different and we didn't know what they were going to be coming into the year but um what eric has decided this team is going to be the identity of this team just, it doesn't work well for him which is you know a bummer and i, I feel bad about that kind of but um but you know you got to win games and this is this is what's working i mean here's the thing dude like yeah like you know that Mus. This is like why I love Mus. I love Mus because Mus is the kind of coach. Like I, I've seen people asking why, and now don't get me wrong, but what I'm gonna say, Kalen Robinson, I think is gonna be great, and I would love to have more shooters on the floor and all that kind of stuff. And uh, this is not a this is not a burn on Kalen Robinson, who I think who I'm glad is raised back, and I think he's gonna play a lot of minutes going forward as he gets older, learns more stuff. Um, gets uh, more uh, adjusted to how Eric wants to play defense and all this kind of stuff. That being said, I see a lot of people asking why Kalen isn't playing, um, you know, that two guard spot, and then you know Tony move Tony around and you know and Mude around, and and the the question is why is Wade playing so much but Kalen's not? Like, like you know, we need we need more shooting, and like look at Wade's stat line, like, and it's you know, it's hardly ever that impressive and stuff. I love that Eric Musselman is the kind of coach that watches this game and has been watching games and knows that Wade is the kind of player that you want to play 35 plus minutes a game. Cause mm-hmm. the stat sheet doesn't say that, but your eyeballs, if you know, if you know a lot about basketball, tell you that when you watch the game. Yeah. I mean, there's so much, so many things that he does that don't show up at all on the stat sheet that a coach notices, like, just like, shading off his man and cutting off Mm -hmm. you know passing lanes i mean it's 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 huge it's the difference between them getting layups he he closes down all kinds of offensive opportunities for the other team that never develop because he gets his foot in there he gets his arm in there and and i'm not even talking about touching the ball i'm talking about just playing off his man and then jumping back to his man and then crowding back into the paint like he if you watch him he's all the time disrupting what the other team wants to do on offense and none of it shows up on the stat sheet but i mean there, there's kind of three things that you know arkansas six game winning streak and in that six game winning streak has held all their opponents to under 40 percent shooting now there's i think there's three main things that arkansas has done that have like, there's a lot of things but three main things that arkansas has done that have contributed to that one is jd is the point guard every minute that he's in the game, which if he's not in foul trouble is like 38 minutes of the game. So the, the, he's the point guard. So they just determined that he's going to be the point guard. That's thing. Number one, number two, Jalen Williams decided he was going to play, start playing out of his mind and be yeah. everywhere and do everything. 
Uh, and number three, Trey Wade started getting 30 plus minutes a game. And I think that's the one that's less obvious, but it is part of it. Like if that is part of when that run starts, when all of a sudden Trey Wade is injected into the starting lineup and starts playing a ton of minutes, it has made a huge difference. He, he is one of the things that changed when they started winning games. And that's, I'm, not I'm just, a, that's not a coincidence. I'm, 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 I'm going to guess <clears throat> with somebody, some statistician, statistician needs to look at this. If you look at how many rebounds Williams gets when Wade's on the floor versus when KJ Robinson or somebody else is on the floor mm-hmm. in that position, I'll bet it, I'll bet there's a significant uptick in minutes with that he plays with Wade. Cause if you look, watch Williams is always down there ripping down the rebound, but it's because Wade has whoever their best rebounder is generally yeah, out, it, out, box, out of balance at the three point. Yeah, he's, he's out like of balance somewhere. Out. Yeah. And and that's a I mean, you don't get that's the thing is you don't get assists on things like rebounds and on shading passing lanes and stuff. But there's some guy that I mean, those, those are the things where people refer to them as the intangibles. And you only notice it if you really know what to look for. But um, like I said, I mean, I would I, that would be an interesting stat. I'll bet his plus minus is really good. Well, I've I've heard uh, Musselman has said now multiple times that one of the reasons that Trey Wade started playing so much is that the, that the other, the, the team wanted him to play more. So like, because in, he, they saw it in practice and he said, if you ask the team, if they were going to pick a starting lineup, he's always in it mm-hmm. because they, they know. Right. And you know, if you ask the team, like if they're, if they're, if they're doing a playground style and they, and they're, you, know, you put two captains, like Wade's getting picked up super early. Uh, that's because basketball players know how, like you know, smart ones. They they know. Uh, you and I have played play ball with guys like that. Not everyone appreciates those guys, but um, the Ryan. smart ones. The smart ones do. Yeah, the smart I ones mean, do. I, like nobody, I, nobody knows who Ryan is, but if you have Ryan on your team, he doesn't look like he should be a good basketball player. And if you're a young guy, you think that guy is not going to help my team, but. Somehow his team always wins and he ends yeah. up with a bunch of rebounds and a bunch of assists and you want him on your team. And that's yeah. the kind of guy Wade is. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so yeah, I love it. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Trey Wade fan. Uh, so keep that, keep that going. Don't, don't be listening to anyone to tell you to bring down Wade's minutes. You just keep him on the floor doing all that stuff that doesn't show up in the box score. But uh, at the end of the game, when the other team shoots 35% for the game, just know that Trey Wade is a big part of that. And I think you're right. When Jalen Williams rips down 15 rebounds, which good on Jalen. Uh, I mean, that, that you don't that it, they don't just fall into your lap. Obviously, mm-hmm. I mean, you, he's working. Uh, but also, yeah, someone else is boxing some dudes out, and uh, Wade is always boxing that his dude out. Yeah, yeah, and honestly, I actually think too on offense, he, I like the way he moves the ball. Like he 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 actually, in my opinion seems to know where the ball wants to go or should go find the soft spot, maybe even better than, uh, Tony and Amude. Like he generally, he generally, he never gets panicky with the ball. You know what I mean? He catches it and generally is calm, looks around if he needs to take a dribble. Cause there's that instinctual thing where you catch the ball. And if the defender is not right it right on top of you, you need to, you know, take a couple of dribbles. So he comes to you. So then the passing lane is there and not every, some guys get all freaked out when they're like, not in a position that they want to shoot the ball, but the defender's not right on them. So he's making the pass difficult and they don't, it's like, you've got to be able to put your back, take a dribble, bring that defender. I feel like Wade uh, plays under control and doesn't make a lot of mistakes, you know? Yeah. 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 That's, that's exactly right. I mean, like you, you don't mind the ball being in his hand. He always, he's making right. He's really unselfish. He's not, he doesn't, he doesn't do stupid stuff. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't get excited. Decision. And like all of a sudden think I'm going to drive this ball when, you know, I'm going to try to cross no. this guy up or something. No, but. no, no, no. All right, man. Well, uh, Tony, keep uh, just moving around without the ball, man. Just keep running around, keep finding those soft spots, crash, come crashing through the lane while Wade and uh, Jalen are boxing the crap out of some dudes and just, you know, dunk some rebounds home. I like it. Uh, you get my game ball, Tony. Good job. Six, eight. I like it. Uh, 19 points. It's good stuff. Uh, next up on the docket, dudes, we have extended now to six wins in a row. As you know, we got to get to eight. 
uh, we don't got to, but we got to, to get to be where I want to be when we face Auburn. We're almost there Wednesday going to Georgia. That's not a given, no givens on the road. Uh, we got to show up and play. So, uh, let's get that one and then come back home and, uh, take a good, uh, take a good look at Mississippi state, try to get that win. Because I tell you this, the one I, I did see the, I didn't watch the game, but I, I saw, uh, some of the recap for Auburn, uh, who just played and tell you what, man, that one is going to be tough. Uh, Auburn looks nasty. Yeah. Oklahoma drew the short straw in this little (laughs) round Robin, didn't they? Yeah. Um, Yeah. No, nobody in the country wants to play Auburn right now, except for I do in a week. Uh, well, not in a week, in a week and a half, I, mm -hmm. I would like, I want to play Auburn, but I don't want to be coming off a loss. I don't want to be, you know, I, I, if we're going to, I didn't need to win eight games in a row to get there. So let's get that done. I guess we'll just leave it right there. Woo pig. Uh, that must figured it out, man. I feel like that is the case. You know, I, I do feel like we can definitively say at this point, I think he's figured out how this team is going to be as good as they can be. Uh, how good that is. We'll see but I do think he figured out how to get the most out of this roster. Yep. I agree. I'm just rubbing my rosary beads and praying that none of these, every time Jalen Williams or Note leave the ground, I'm like, please let them land. Okay. Keep (laughs) all those feet out from under their feet. Cause we're like one injury away from this team being really, you know, tough to watch. So, uh, but it's exciting right now. Yeah, man. All right. Well, uh, I'll see you on Wednesday. All right, dude. All right, see see ya.